today we're touching upon one of two one another instructions, both found in chapter four of the letter to the church at Ephesus. These two one another statements are like bookends to the chapter, which overall addresses the call upon Christ's followers to be united as a body and united in spirit. Of course, that is a common goal of all of these one another commands, teaching us how to live with and among one another in the bonds of love. But these bookended behavior boosts are actually part of a more singular focus, unity. In fact, the whole second half of Ephesians addresses living in unity as the body of Christ. So let's jump into today's verse and explore a little bit of unity. Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 3. As a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Did you hear that phrase, unity of the Spirit? Paul says to make every effort to maintain this most essential element. Now, I know he's writing to the community as a whole, but I can't help but read this as a personal assignment. Not unlike how I read Romans 12, 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, that may also be a collective assignment, but it only works when we take it as an individual necessity. Paul says that this spiritual unity is achieved through the common goal of peace, and that the bond of peace is achieved, at least in part, by bearing with each other. And this bearing with, which some translate tolerate, is made up of three characteristics, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, gentleness and patience are facets of the fruit of the Spirit. If we are maturing as Christ followers, then we are regularly engaging the Holy Spirit's power to walk in His purposes, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Humility, being humble, is another matter entirely. Biblical humility is grounded in the character of God and exhibited in the life of the Son, who humbled himself as a servant even to the point of death, and that in obedience to the Father. For our part, it takes a posture of humility to recognize our need for a Savior and to reach out and embrace that which is offered up to this by the Son, and further, to emulate the ways of Jesus who both taught and modeled humility as an element of loving one another. But upward humility is more readily attained than outward humility. And like Jesus, Peter and James and Paul all called us on it, and they called us to it. From Paul, perhaps nowhere more clearly than his letter to the Philippian church. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Heeding Paul's call is moving from selfishness to selflessness. It's not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. It's a move from only seeing me to mainly seeing you. The how we should be in all of this is see less of me. How are you at bringing peace? Are you exercising the Spirit's fruit of patience and gentleness? And are you emulating your Savior's love by focusing on others? What helps you do that? I'd love to hear. Happy one another. Again.